Hey, welcome back to the Ready State. One of the things that we're needing to wrap our heads around a little bit more of is who owns pain and where's the best place to handle injury. Now, one of the things that we know we have done perhaps a, an incomplete job of in the past is trying to rectify someone's injury with what's really going on in society. And if we look at the sort of NAGI model, the WHO model for a disability or injury, what we're really talking about is, hey, someone is unable to perform their role in society. They're unable to perform their ro role on a team. Or we like to say you've got gonorrhea of the knee or, or rabies of the knee or the bone sticking out of your leg. Something is, is obviously pathological, right? That's an injury. But really comes down to, in 1997, 1977, there was a, an interdisciplinary model produced called the biopsychosocial model. And if you have been living under a rock, the biopsychosocial model is basically an interdisciplinary approach that recognizes that the human being is an integrated system of whole, that your tribe matters, that your nutrition matters, and just as it says, that your biology matters and is as highly influenced by your brain and your environment as the tissue system itself, right? Of late, we've definitely seen sort of a, a swing back towards, hey, we really need to take a pay, pay attention to the brain and what's, what's happening on there that may have sensitized or maybe limiting or changing my fear beliefs or pain beliefs around healing, okay? So this is all well and good. But more importantly, this biopsychosocial model, BPS for short, really ultimately fits into the category of what we call sports and performance. Because we've known for a long time that uh, we can't actually get all the things out of our athletes unless they feel so safe and secure, unless their nutrition is, is dialed, unless they, they feel like they're part of the team, unless their tissues are robust. So what I want to do is just highlight for you for the fact that some of the aspects of biopsychosocial, when you hear that, sometimes what we think is, hey, less stress, right? And, and or this is all in your head, or your brain is changing, or something aspect of your, of your life. But at a granular level, the biopsychosocial component means that when we're talking about the B in bio, this could be training, right? This is looking at training volumes, all of those things that are important. And sleep, nutrition, Right. The other thing we would add is tissue health. And what I want to put into your, your brain here is if we're really talking about bio, and we're not just saying, hey, you got to exercise or load the tissue or it's just mechanotransduction, this is deep. And we need to be much more granular about, hey, what can we control during, during times of injury or times of peak stress? I've got to manage your sleep. What does that mean? We're going to track it. We're going to actually get ahead of it. We're going to really talk about sleep density. Nutrition's a big deal here, right? If we're going to talk about the fact that your tissues are a reflection of their environment in this model of biopsychosocial health and behavior, we're going to have to talk about collagen and protein intake and some of those other aspects, right? The tissue health means that, boy, where, what am I doing when I'm in the gym? I could be decongesting a tissue, I could be circulating blood flow, I could be removing lymph, I could be creating a more healthy environment, I could unload an injured site and upregulate the entire system. What do you think blood flow restriction is doing? Occlusion training. So this biopsychosocial componentry to injury and management, for one, I don't think that a 30 minute evaluation with my physician is the place where I'm going to get all this information unless I get a handout. Right? It's also, if I am seeing my physical therapist and take, I get, it takes me t you know, two or three weeks to get a 45 minute eval and a couple more weeks to do a follow up or 10 days for a 30 minute follow up, are these the things that are kinds of conversations that I'm having or is this the kind of conversation I'm having in the gym with my trainer where I'm having three to five potential contact hours a week, even two to three contact hours a week, which means we need to think differently about how we're teaching people about these aspects, right? The psycho though, it's a big deal. Pain, injury beliefs. One of the things that is interesting about this is that for the person who's not in a regular training environment, this can be very, very scary. I'm, I've never had pain before, all of a sudden this pain. But if you're in a training environment, this is part and parcel of what it means to be in the athletic experience. And so one of the nice things is that we are always having positive conversations about what can we do. Hey, we're going to train around this issue. Why? Because you're an athlete, and athletes sometimes get hurt when they do things that are athletic, right? So return to play. or what we like to call gameness, is also an aspect of this psycho component, right? That we're looking at, hey, getting our athletes feeling like they're excited to come back, managing that, where do we put loci of control? 
who owns this? Well, one of the big, big components of a healthy training environment is shifting as much responsibility onto the athlete as it can. Are you prepared for training or not? Are you eating? Are you recovering, right? And so our athletes in a healthy training environment should absolutely feel like they have a solid and large low side of control, which is another word for agency, right? That our athletes, should they be injured, feel like they know what to do next, that they can still come into the gym, they're still being able to uh, train, they know that this is not a, a permanent solution, that there's something they can do to make themselves feel better, right? And as we go through this series, we're gonna work our way in the, some subsequent lectures, mini lectures about components of the biopsychosocial model, but understand that in this psychocomponentry here, we're seeing that motivation, low side of control, return to play, pain injury beliefs, are really well handled inside the gym environment. And the last one, which always gets lost in this language, especially coming from sort of traditional medical-based models, is the fact that we're talking about the maintenance of your social ties, which is short for, are you still training in your social environment, in your community? So if you're showing up and you're injured, we tell all our athletes, come and do your rehab at our gym. And we do have physical therapists here, which is very nice, but we're like, do your rehab, or, if you're locked out in a brace, we're gonna go ahead and get you training with the other limbs. So one of the things that happens is we don't suck people out of their tribe. And I can't tribe inclusion. I can't highlight this enough. One of the things that is not set up for it is our current medical system. One of the things that is set up for it is our current training environment. So if we can keep someone in their tribe and avoid isolation, this is an important model. And one of the reasons that we really advocate for physical therapists to keep a table in the gym. So if you're working in a high performance environment, absolutely be, your physical therapist should have her treatment table inside your gym. Your Cairo is there. Why? Because we want people to see that this injury phenomenon, which is going to happen to probably 100% of us over the lifetime of ourselves, is actually just a component of being human. And by keeping people integrated into their work communities, into their team communities, they're able to manage and, and sustain these vital social ties. So when we're talking about, hey, can I manage and keep my role in society, my role in the team, my relationships, that's this social component, right? I have belief, I have my network of support systems, and more importantly, we make this injury a normative experience that, hey, we, every, once, every once in a while you're gonna step off a curb and break your ankle, and that does not mean that you lose your training, you lose your community, you lose your aspect, or lose your control. So as we work through this biopsychosocial componentry of injury, we've gotta be thinking to ourselves, where's the best place to deliver this? For us, it's always been high performance environments like the gym, like the training center, why? Because if we don't talk about these things anyway, we're never gonna win, we're never gonna succeed, or we're never gonna be successful competing, so we might as well own pain and injury here anyway.